Hello and welcome back to the Helmet Head podcast. Now I am currently in Portugal, actually filming part of my world adventure, but I've had a great opportunity to be able to interview Paul. Now you've already seen Paul on series one, series two, and obviously this series, but he doesn't say very much. So this gives an opportunity to actually find more out about Paul. So Mr. Checkers, Mr. Paul Checkers. Yes, that's me. Let's talk about your life. You know, like in the old days, this is your life. Yeah. Let's start with... It'll be a very small book. The motorcycle, the first ever time, the first motorcycle uh, you've ever ridden and your little bit of a story about your bike history. First motorcycle was purchased at 15. Obviously I wasn't allowed to ride until I was 16. Um, It was a Honda MTX 50. And it was a trail bike. It was a brilliant bike. I I still love Hondas to this day. Um, what my parents didn't realise was that I may have test ridden it out on the road before <laughs> I, I got my driving licence on my 16th birthday and it may have had an 80cc kit in it, <laughs> making it the fastest 50 in the town. <laughs> so everybody wanted to try and catch you, nobody everybody could. Everybody wanted to catch me and nobody could. It was, it was a piece of kit. And uh, yeah, I had a few incidents while well, I was learning because back in those days they just gave you a license and a, and you bought your bike and off you went there was no such thing as CBT or any training whatsoever I'd ridden bike you, you say farms. you bought your license yeah it came from cornflake packet <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you had to pay for your license but you didn't have to do a test no test wow no no test no CBT nothing you, you stuck your L plates on you had a provisional 50cc license yeah and away you went and I'd ridden bikes around the farm and, and whatever you but uh, riding on the road was was definitely a new thing and yeah, we had a few incidents I think I remember <laughs> wheeling straight across the T-junction at one point into somebody's gate uh, yeah I may have jumped over a car but she was on the wrong side of the road in a country lane where there was only one, one direction <laughs> yeah, it was all good fun <laughs> it was brilliant. It's weird, it jumped over the road. <laughs> <laughs> As you do. And then I moved up from that one. What did I go on to from there? That was. I actually rode that 50 well into the age of. well over the age of 17, because obviously, come set, turn 17, I could have ridden a 125. Again, no test, no license. I passed my car test, I think, before I got another bike didn't get a car, but then I could take the L plates off the 50, because as soon as you pass the car test, you could ride the 50 without L plates. Um, where did I go for the 125 then? Ah, DT, it was DT125. Everyone had a DT125, didn't they? Was it the LC? It was the LC. Yeah, everybody had a DT125. Yeah, everyone had them, they were awesome. So it was very much trail bikes to start with in my in my youth. Yeah. Um, and what was the what was the Yamaha? The, the the road really horrible. It's sort of equivalent shape to a CG one two five. Was the was it the RS one two five? Oh, the RS one two five. The Aprilia RS sports no, no, bike. It was a Yamaha. No, it wasn't a sports bike. No, the sports bikes came later. I'm not sure. It was a horrible machine. I think it was only a hundred. It was horrible to ride, but it got me about. It, it did what I had to do. And then I went for a few years without a bike. I went through a few cars in different ways. And moved up to a TZR 125. That was my first sporty looking machine. Yeah, I remember then and the MR TZRs. Yeah, two, they were quick. Two stroke. Good old smell. Turned the power stroke. valve round so that it was <laughs> 75 mile an hour top speed on the clocks. I don't know what the actual speed was because the clocks weren't exactly accurate when they worked. Of course, you used to unscrew the unscrew the, the clocks to so you didn't put too much mileage on the bike so you could sell it for a little bit more later on in life. Um, which I did. I then swapped that TZR for a Sierra, I believe. A Sierra? Yeah. What's wrong here? I know. Oh, What's wrong here? It was a good here? car. It was good for the Sierra. It was a good car. Two litre Sierra, two litre gear. Um, yeah, I went for a while without bikes. Um, was he having a bit of a, at that point, were you having a bit of a nervous breakdown or no, feeling unwell in any way whatsoever? Oh, I think I, think I was unwell, <laughs> I just didn't realise at the time. 
uh, money and cars cars were functional bikes were always fun so I think yeah I think it was it was money it went through some dodgy years and then of course women coming along and kids and yeah yeah it's a lot of people's story isn't it with bikes have them when they're yeah. younger yeah and then as they get a bit older they get mad to get kids they decide not to ride and then they sort of right. come back to them in the end when it's really of their youth yeah and that's what I did I bought probably 20 years ago trying to work out how old I am not that old obviously 21 it's obviously really young yeah yeah really young 20 years ago bought a GPZ 900 nice top gun bike yeah, yeah, nice. That was beautiful. It was a heavy bike, sports bike. Did you do bike. any of the scenes? Did you ride next to any jets of taken course, off? Of course I did, yeah. I, I reacted that in a video yeah. once. Yeah. Well, it's actually did really do that. People go back and find it. Yeah, <laughs> I reacted the whole Top Gun scenes. I no, would have to watch that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be worth mentioning as well, for anybody that's not watching the video podcast with the scenery behind us of the pool, you might be able to hear running water because we are actually sat in the shady part because it's so hot in Portugal to make everybody jealous um, and we arrived a little bit early slightly on purpose to make this podcast today but if you can hear what sounds like someone's left a tap on it because we are sat next to a pool drinking beer out of tins because basically the bar's closed here and we went all out cheap went and bought some tinnies so we'll go and sit by the pool with some tinnies at this basically like a euro a, a can <laughs> And we've got some biscuits as well. So if you hear any munching or water thinging or can, or beer can drinking, that's shady because we're sat here doing that. For anybody that's not watching it, that's listening to it on Apple Podcasts, just to give you an idea of where we are. Beautiful pool, beautiful background in the south of Portugal, in the Algarves. It's beautiful. It really is beautiful. So moving on to your more modern bikes. Yes. Obviously, you've had quite a lot, I know that. Yeah. What right now is in your garage? In the garage now is my... ST1100, pan-European, uh, 2000. Um, everybody knows about that one if, they, if they've already watched your videos, I'm sure. That's uh, the famous that's, one. That's, that's my forever bike now, I think. That's, it's, it's comfortable, it's, it's agile. It's got a helmet head sticker on it. It's got a helmet head sticker on it, so I can never get rid of it. It's priceless. Um, and currently I have a CBR600, um, which needs a little bit of work to get back on the road for MOT. I think that's going to be sold for my next toy. Then once that's done, and the CBR 900 Fireblade, which I, I'm getting on a little bit these days. Which I, I love the riding. 40 minutes to an hour is about as much as I can do on that. So that's that's my that's my fun bike when I've got a spare hour or two in the afternoon, and uh, and I stick with a the pan. Then it's all Hondas. The it's all Hondas. Yeah, yeah three Hondas. Honda. Honda fanboy. Fanboy, if that's what you want to call it, yeah. Yeah, it's a fanboy, <laughs> Honda fanboy. Yeah, indeed. So you've got awesome bikes, you've started off quite young, you wheeled across the road, you were really dangerous. That's happened pretty much on our trip as well, he's done some dangerous stuff when you were watch it. Um, let's move on to the well trip and first of all, how we met. Let's, let's talk about that because we met before the well trip. We did. So explain the first meeting. First meeting was your round that, that was your four points of the uk wasn't it it was the uh, north south was, east and north, west yeah, yeah that was it and and you were doing it on a pan-european yes which is how i came to, to find out about you because you were added into one of the groups on facebook yeah that i'm i'm a member of and uh, yeah i i guess that you would be coming past down my way because we're on the on quite on coastline where where home is and uh, yeah, I was following your, your tracking link and you were you were on the bridge and I was thinking, oh, I've got time for another cup of coffee and uh, <laughs> no rush. You were on, on the bridge just coming out of Wales and I'm about an hour from, from that bridge. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm sitting there drinking my coffee thinking, oh, yeah, better start getting ready to go. I'd got the bike out, the bike was ready and, and ready to go. I just hadn't got my gear on or anything. And then I, I look at the track, tracking link, another what seemed like five or ten minutes later oh my goodness me you're on the m5 which is just just where my tower like, if i'm going to catch you now i i've got to leave so i didn't chuck any any protective trousers on i was my normal normal <coughs> home gear chuck my jacket on grab my helmet and i was off and i i luckily you stopped at the motorway services in my town and we rocked up there i, I managed, i'd already chucked a load of fizzy pop because you'd mentioned everywhere that yeah that you were you were wanting some fizzy pop, so I chucked a load of fizzy pop in. I think 
as I, as I arrived, you were there. You were just going to go and buy yourself a pie, I think, from Greg's, weren't you? Yeah, I was and, uh, shattered. You were absolutely yeah. exhausted. <laughs> and uh, so I spoke to Sidekick briefly and uh, offered him a, a can of fizzy pop, and he refused. And, <laughs> Grateful <laughs> And he refused on your behalf. Yeah, well. I didn't get a can of pop, <laughs> and I found out afterwards. I rode all that, all that, <laughs> that ride with you with, with cans of pop in the back that nobody wanted. <laughs> well, they did want, but they didn't know they wanted it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I rode, rode a short short way down the motorway with you then, didn't you, as you were hacking the miles down. I think we got to Exeter and yeah. turned round. There were a couple of other bands turned up. Yeah, there was, wasn't there? as well, joined you along and joined along with you. And, uh, yeah, didn't really get a chance to talk or, or, or to get to know you much at, at that point. It was all go, go, um, go, weren't it, to get yeah, to all the different points? Watching, watching YouTube videos and felt like I knew everything about you. <laughs> <laughs> you knew nothing about me. And uh, and then you were doing your your second around the around the, the UK, around the UK trip on, on a 125 on, on the what well, well, wasn't Ashworth then was it no it was, it was just, just it was the helmet head 11 out of 10 monkey bike yeah yeah <laughs> and again I figured part of your route would be would be coming past me and indeed it was I I drove out of my house down to a T junction on the A39 it was literally two minutes from my home and. Uh, there you are, coming, coming Zinging down. Along. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he'll give you two, and I think I was Mark or Chris at something at like that point. You could, yeah, I couldn't you, remember you your name. You were so exhausted on the first day. I just didn't remember your name was, in general, yeah. because like, <laughs> like, lots of people say hello. And it, as a person, I'm terrible with dates, as in number dates. Or like birthday is like my wife's birthday, I have to keep going, is your birthday then? Yeah. And people's names, because obviously I, I meet so many people and talk to so many people, it's really hard to keep up with it. And because there was another guy that was there, I thought it was called Mark or whatever his name was. Then it, <laughs> he got called Mark or Mike or Dave, whatever it was, for about, I don't know, the first few times. But you were like, like just went, we went with it. Oh, you yeah. didn't care. You were like, oh, and then eventually we were like, the, obviously we got it wrong and you were pulled. Yeah. And you came to the reveal. For the, the reveal, for yeah. The, for Ashworth, that's when the monkey bike was transformed into this world conquering beast. But what I want to talk about, what was awesome, is I set off on leg one to take on the world. I had no idea who was coming and what was going to happen or anything. I just set off, I put my tracker out and then let you take over with what happened next. What happened next is I, I had a little bit of inside information. Some of your trailers for that world trip or, or lives, I think it might have been, you gave away the times of, that you were getting on the train. And, uh, and so I, I took that information in, I booked the train and uh, I managed to get the information of the first hotels you'd booked as well for the for the secret the service stuff sort of thing. It all secret service. I, I can't can't explain exactly how I got that information, but but I acquired some good information and uh, yeah, set off with four hours watching your tracking link. You were coming down from the north. I was coming across from the west, and uh, yeah, I, I, I knew you were close by to the tunnel and. Uh, as I come up to the services, I needed fuel, and I was just going to go into the petrol station. I figured you'd be there somewhere. And as I'm coming up to the roundabout, to this, what first looked to me like a big adventure bike, <laughs> and I knew what, what Ashworth looked like. But from it a looked distance, like, it yeah, looks distance, like a big adventure bike. Like a it? big adventure bike. And I thought, oh, that's a nice bike. You must be good. Must be going and doing some touring. Oh no, that's Helmet Head. <laughs> I mean, it's him. <laughs> yeah, and um, he rode with me. Rode with you most of most of that. Literally about three quarters of the way quarters of, of the, way. France, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, I had I had to book the return tunnel, so yeah. So I had to turn around on that trip. And literally and two uh, days is all it was. I was by myself. You were yes, with me for literally yeah, it was. over half of the adventure. Yeah. Yeah, and um, then you came back on the second leg, obviously with Lee Ashworth, the man who built Ashworth itself. That's right. Yeah, and you yeah, rode the Lee's, whole Lee's length. Very local to me, so we rode up from from Somerset. That's a long so, way. Didn't you? you literally rode the whole of France again. Yeah, yeah, in two days. <laughs> in two yeah. days, like five hundred miles a day, all yeah. the way to join me again. Because yeah, I just at this point I just flew over. Yeah, could, yeah like yeah. I think it's an hour and a half flight at that point, or whatever it was. And got picked up and was uh, I was actually chatting with my dad's where the body was being stored. You met me there with, with with Lee, didn't we? And then we literally then we did. You followed me the whole of the second leg where we went to Spain, That's right? Yeah. And then down into Portugal, and we had some fun on the monkey bikes. Great fun that was, yeah. And then, yeah, and then you had to turn around and then ride all the way we back. Did. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Um, I, well, I managed to make it to. I've got family in Belgium, 
Do you so have Belgium on, on as well? The way back, I did Belgium, yeah. Well, we just had a little bit of technical difficulty, so there might be a bit of a slice if you're watching the video because it is so hot, hence why we're sat in the shade. The camera just overheated, so we've given it a bit of time to cool down. And I think that we were at basically how many days did it take you to get back? Was it from? I think that's what you asked. Excuse me, while I just munch on a biscuit. He's eating biscuits now. I'm going to open my beer as well. Beer. So we might as well have that on. Ka -ching, Noise friend. of that. Good thing. Good thing. Good thing. Good thing. How many days was it? Ten days. Ten. The whole trip, wasn't it? The whole trip was ten days. From yeah. And then I think it was three thousand two hundred miles I covered. Three thousand two hundred miles just to hang out with me. Just to, <laughs> just to hang out with Helmet Head. And at the end of that, you turn around and said, "You're not ever coming ever ever again." That's not quite what I said, but well, that's, you, that's what I'm going to say. You refused, what, I might have said, implied that. I've, I've had enough of you, you <laughs> smelly git. I just want to go home. Um, so then you've come and joined me. So you missed a leg. Then I did miss a leg, yeah. On leg four now, mm -hmm. and we've just literally ridden basically the north to south of Portugal. We've got literally seventy kilometres to go. And we hit the hit the coast. Um, well, what an hasn't it been awesome? Yeah, what an adventure it's been. It has. We had sunshine, rain, thunderstorms. Yeah, had the and lot. some awesome roads. And what bike were you riding? That's that's. Well, it wasn't my pan. It wasn't. You flew but it was time. a Honda. Uh, it was a pink monkey bike. You hired it, didn't you? From I hired the pink monkey bike from Pink My Bike. And it cost you how much for how many days? 550 euros for the whole well, for the whole trip. That's including them picking the bike up from the other end of Portugal and, and taking it back. It's and a good I think price, was, isn't it? I think that was a very good price. And it is a brilliant bike. Monkeys are brilliant. It's on. They yeah. yeah, they're great bikes. I mean, they're just a, a laugh, a giggle. That's, that's all it is. That's all it ever is with you. <laughs> if, if we're not laughing, we're giggling. If we're not giggling, I'm crying. <laughs> we turned up, didn't we? We turned up to a hotel. Was it night one? Which, yeah, which it was one night one soaked about? through. Night one yeah. soaked oh, through. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were drenched. We walked to the, the restaurant that closed, basically told them that I'm a lord touring the world and got, obviously, cameras out everywhere. And they opened the restaurant for us, didn't they? They did. They said, you're a lord, we'll open the restaurant. But they, but they wouldn't let us get it changed. <laughs> so we sat you there get dripping out. in all our bike gear. Oh, the biggest puddle ever underneath, <laughs> underneath me. I didn't, didn't look at your puddle. <laughs> and we sat there eating, like, basically, um, what's the really posh food? Is it... Oh, when you Yeah, but they call it, don't they? When you go into, like, a cruise or something, there's certain restaurants that's... Um, oh, I was trying to think. A la carte. It was. It was very yeah. a la carte, wasn't it, really? If you say so, yeah. It, it was, was a beautiful, it was, massive meat piece fish? of fish, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was meat or fish, that's all we've got <laughs> options. Everywhere says, says that. Yeah. Massive piece of fish with almost like, like between potato and crisps all around it. And we scoffed it, didn't we? That was very good. And then we drank a good. bottle of wine. Yeah. And then we and then, bought two then more. Then we emptied our boots out. <laughs> yeah, emptied our boots out. <laughs> bought two more bottles of wine because the bar was closed. <laughs> and basically sat in the room drinking wine. And got smashed. And got smashed. <laughs> <laughs> and the next day we were a bit... <laughs> <laughs> do, we need, do we really want to ride a monkey bike across Portugal today? Do we have to? But we did. We did. And it was, and it was awesome. Yeah. It was, um, and that, that, that next day was the was the best. Absolutely super. Yeah, it was road. the best day of the whole lot. It was mm. just mountain passes, riding with all the wet through the vineyard yards on the mountains and the footage and the drone stuff we got was incredible yeah and then um the big thing is i suppose now is is when are you going to come next i'm not coming ever <laughs> i'm not i'm not i'm not coming to gibraltar i'm not coming to morocco <laughs> but maybe i am <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hopefully, i think i will hopefully the plan i'm very, is. very close to having everything set up to come to gibraltar the next that, that, next leg that's which a is a bit nuts though isn't it's it it's going to be nuts yeah so for, for the way it's going to work is because you can't hire a bike obviously in portugal and take it in spain and obviously you can't hire a bike in gibraltar and take it out well they don't do bike hire in gibraltar anyway what's going to happen pretty much if this works you're going to fly with me because i have to fly from bristol it's 150 miles from where i live to go and fly yeah. in the first place i'm going to land pick up my bike you're going to get an uber taxi a coach, I think, is or the first, coach. first option. That's its cheapest yeah. one, isn't it? Yeah. Coached out of Portugal in Spain, pick up a bike. I'm going to ride over to Spain, and then we're going to spend yeah. basically chilled out about three days of just chilled out coastal riding around Spain. And then you've got to drop the bike back, and then you've got to get... <laughs> the walk like, across the bridge an, to, an, an to Uber Gibraltar. to get to Gibraltar, and then walk across the bridge. <laughs> and, but, but, which apparently is an airfield. Yeah. We just walk across the airfield. <laughs> <laughs> 
plain duck. <laughs> 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 and then basically spend the day in Gibraltar and fly home. I mean, if it works, we have no idea. It's going to work. We, we just, it always works. Literally, it's that, isn't Everything it? works. E- yeah, it everything that could go wrong all, all happens on these trips. And like, it's the point that you just, I broke down the side of the road and it's like, it'll be all right. Because yeah. and it was <laughs> someone comes and helps, don't they, and sorts it out, and I get back on the road. Yeah, and then hopefully the leg after that is Morocco. What will Morocco mean that what Paul sounds will, yeah, brilliant. But you'll have to fly into Morocco because I'll be in Gibraltar. Yep. Hire a bike, meet me again, and then if we can pull it off, what what might not happen because of the sheer distance? Yeah, we're going to try to get to the basically the Sahara Desert where the road finishes. And spend half a day messing around in the desert, but we met somebody, didn't we? We that, have. That told us that it's like about 16 days worth of travel, <laughs> and we've got 10. I haven't got any time off work. <laughs> so we've got to try and pull that off. Yeah. Um, so it's going to get more and more exciting. It is going to be, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be good. It always it? is. Yeah, it's yeah. always a laugh. Well, yeah. at the end of the day, though, thank you for coming on the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for travelling most of my well trips so far. And, and potentially, if I can keep talking him into it, because I don't know how I'm managing to do it, you're don't literally need to. coming back, aren't, aren't you? I'm coming back. Now, you've got your own business. Yeah. And yeah. where is that? Where? I'm, I'm based in Bridgewater in Somerset. And what do you do? I've got a, a taxi company. Yeah. I say a taxi company. I, it was a bigger company. It's just me now. Um, but, yeah, I'm a taxi company, check cabs in Bridgewater. So if people so just Google checker cabs. They Google checker cabs, or if they want to give me a ring, they'll book a taxi with Paul that has bumbled along with Helmet Head throughout the world, or part of the world, um, on 01278 425858. I'll turn up and pick you up. Could you imagine? Imagine if Paul starts getting loads of pictures with people that have bit, literally booked a taxi with you, just to talk to you about the trip. Yeah. They're not really wanting to don't go, go anywhere. anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> you just drive just me around the, the taxi for five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> how, how, much, how much is a five minute conversation? 100 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go, everybody. Thank you so much for watching and listening to this podcast. Obviously, like I always say, there's everything that you need to know is down in the description or the show notes, depending if you're listening to it as a podcast on Apple or Spotify or you're watching a video podcast on YouTube. Obviously, if you're on there, please subscribe. If you're on podcasts um, like Apple, please follow it. Um, and I will obviously see you in the next one. And please give it a review if you're on any of the podcast sites because it really, really helps the channel, or this channel, this podcast grow. So I will see you in the next podcast. I have no idea what it is at this point, but we'll make it epic and it'll be good. And hopefully we'll get either some press releases or interview somebody else. So I will see you next time. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye for now.